Anywhere, anywhere, fear I cannot know. Anywhere with Jesus I can safely go. Anywhere, 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 fear I cannot know. Anywhere with Jesus. I can safely go anywhere, anywhere, anywhere. Fear I cannot know. Anywhere with Jesus, I can safely go. Anywhere with Jesus I can say go anywhere he leads me in this world below anywhere without him dear rest joys would fade anywhere with jesus i am not afraid anywhere 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 fear i cannot know Anywhere with Jesus I can safely go Anywhere with Jesus I am not alone All the friends may fail me he is still my own though his hand may lead me over drear rest ways anywhere with jesus is a house of praise anywhere 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 fear i cannot know anywhere with jesus i can save lee everybody singing anywhere anywhere Fear I cannot know. Anywhere with Jesus I can safely go. Anywhere with Jesus over land and sea, telling souls. In darkness of salvation free, ready as his arms me to go or stay. Anywhere with Jesus when he points the way, anywhere, anywhere. Anyway, fear I can not know. Anyway, what Jesus I can see go. Anywhere with Jesus I can go to sleep. When 
the dark need shadows round about me creep knowing i shall wake in never more cheer anywhere with jesus will be home sweet home anywhere Can the man sing that alone? Eh? Anywhere, anywhere, fear I cannot know. Anywhere with Jesus I can save. I want to hear the female voices now. Sing that again for your husbands. Anyway. Everybody sing it anyway. Anyway, fear I can not know. Till the whole world knows, till the whole world knows. I will shout and sing of Christ my King till the whole world knows, till the whole world knows, till the whole world knows, I will shout and sing of Christ my King till the whole world knows everybody till the whole world knows till the whole world knows I will shout and sing of Christ my King till the whole world knows I'll tell you all that God is love for the world has never known the great compassion of his heart for the way world and the loan till the whole world knows till the whole world knows I will shout and sing of Christ my King till the whole world knows I'll tell of mercy's boundless tide like the waters of 
the sea that covers every sin of man till salvation full and free. That keeps the soul of abiding peace within your face that overcomes the world with its tumult and its din. Till the whole world knows Yes, I will shout and sing of Christ My King till the whole world knows Eternal glory is the goal that awaits the sons of light eternal darkness black as death for the children of the night till the whole world Send the gospel of salvation to a world of dying men. Tell it to you to every nation till. The Lord shall come again now. Go and tell them, go and tell them Jesus died for sinful men. Go and tell them, go and tell them he is coming he is coming he is coming back again tis the church's great commission tis the master's last command christ has died for every creature tell it out in every land go and tell them go and tell them jesus died for sinful men go and tell them Go and tell them he is coming, he is coming, he is coming back again. Christ is gathering out a people to his name from every race. His 
to give the invitation ere shall end the day of grace go sinful men till the bride shall be completed and the Lord shall come again go and tell them go and tell them Jesus died for sinful men go Tell them, yes, go and tell them He is coming, He is coming, He is coming back Everybody go and tell them, go and tell them Jesus died for sinful men Go and tell them, go and tell them, he is coming, he is coming, he is coming back. Make your mind, make up your mind, go and tell them, go and tell them, Jesus died for sinful men. Go and tell them go and tell them he is coming he is coming he is coming back clap your hand go and tell them go and tell them jesus died for sinful men go and tell them go and tell them he is coming he is coming he is coming back sing aloud go and tell them go and tell them jesus died for sinful men go and tell them go and tell them he is coming, he is coming, he is coming back. Everybody go and tell them, go and tell them, Jesus died for sinful men. Go and tell them, go and tell them. He is coming, he is coming, he is coming back. Go and tell them, go and tell them, Jesus died for sinful men. Go and tell them, go and tell them, he is coming, he is coming, he is coming back again, go and tell them, Go and tell them Jesus died for sinful men. Go 
and tell them, go and tell them, he is coming, he is coming, he is coming back again. Close your eyes and pray and tell the Lord what he has told you to do. You will do. Go and tell them. Go and tell them that Jesus died for sinful men. Go and tell them. Go and tell them. Let them repent before it's too late. Because he's coming. He's coming back again. Go and tell them. Go and tell them. Anywhere, everywhere, fear you cannot know. Go and tell them. The Lord promises to go with you. Go and tell them. Commit your life. Consecrate your life. Give your life everything you've got. Lay everything on the altar. That your life, your time, your skill, your knowledge, your wisdom, your ability, your resources, everything you've got will be to tell the world of the good news of salvation. Take up your cross, deny yourself, and commit your whole life and your whole family to going, telling of the salvation of the Lord for the world. Go and tell them. Everywhere you see them, tell them. Everywhere they gather together, tell them. Anywhere they cross your way, tell them. In the city, tell them. The village, tell them. In the gathering, the concourse of men and women, tell them. Anywhere, everywhere, tell them. Go and tell them, go and tell them. Jesus died for sinful men. Go and tell them, go and tell them, he's coming. He's coming. He's coming back again. Let this be your one desire, your one focus. Your one ambition, your one goal, your one dream. Telling of the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. Go tell them. Promise the Lord and then he'll give you all the grace you need, all the strength you need, all the power you need, all the wisdom you need. Go and tell them. In Jesus' name we pray. And the ministers of God said, Heavenly Father, we bless your name for the challenge you have given us already. You have given us the great commission. And you have sent us out with all the grace, all the gift, all the power, all the knowledge, all the wisdom, all the love, all the enthusiasm and zeal that we need. Lord, we pray we will lose time no longer. Will rise up and go and tell our world of the salvation of the Lord in Jesus' name. This will be our one ambition. And this will be our one goal. This will be our one desire and dream. Anywhere we find ourselves and the places in particular you send us to. will tell them of the salvation of the Lord in Jesus' name. I will pray, Lord, multitudes turn to the Lord and He give their hearts and their lives to the Lord in genuine conversion and salvation in Jesus' name. Confirm your word and your truth as we go out in obedience to your great commission in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's sit down. Thank you and God bless you. We're back to you. Acts of the Apostles chapter 26. Acts chapter 26. And we're looking at verse 17. God's unchanging promise of deliverance. God's unchanging promise of deliverance. Now, we need to understand as we look at the promises of God. 
The promises of God are very, very often conditional. The promises of God are sometimes peculiar. Uh, there are some promises of God for those who walk in the way of the Lord in obedience to the Lord. There are some promises of the Lord for those who go. And while they are going, the presence of the Lord, the protection of the Lord, the power of the Lord will be with them. And those promises of God for the people that go. They are not for the people that sit or the people that wait or the people that just retard their progress. There are some promises like that. And one of those promises we're looking at this morning for the people that go, for the people that do, for the people that in obedience to the Lord in answer to the question of the Lord who shall go for us. And who shall we send? And those who respond to that request and question, this promise is for them. I'm reading from Acts chapter 26, verse 17. Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom I now send thee. And while Paul the apostle was going, to the people that God had sent him, he knew without any shadow of doubt that in the path of obedience, in the path of doing the will of God, in the path of announcing and proclaiming and preaching the good news of salvation to the men and the women and to the young and to the old and to the Jews and to the Gentiles and to the kings and their subjects in doing what the Lord had called him to do. He was very sure of the protection of the Lord delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom I now send thee. Our commission involves preaching the gospel to all people in all places, in all periods of time. Number one, to all people. Number two, to all, in all places. Number three, all periods of time. And some of the people that Paul the Apostle, that he was going to meet, and as you read Acts of the Apostles from chapter 9, onward to the end of Acts of the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 28, you're going to find the kinds of people that he met. And the kinds of people that the Lord sent him to. And you see why God said, Yes, they're going to oppose and they're going to resist and they're going to try to do evil. But don't look at that. Keep your eyes on the Almighty God because He has given you the promise I'll be delivering you from all the people unto whom I now send thee. What kind of people? Number one, they were dangerous people. Dangerous people. There are some idol worshippers, there are some witch doctors, and there are some sorcerers that will try to go against and to oppose and to dissuade the people that Paul the Apostle will be preaching to. And God said, yes, I know, number one, you'll find dangerous people, but when you come to them, remember that I am with you. The authority of the name of Christ, the power of the Holy Ghost will be with you. I will deliver you from all the people. I'm sending you to number two. There will be difficult people, just tough-minded, hard, religious difficult people the people that will not rest they bind themselves together 40 of them and he said they will not drink water they will not eat anything until they killed paul and he'll call me to this terrible covenant that the only thing that will satisfy their thirst is not water is not drink is not wine is the blood of Paul. And so there will be difficult people. Number three, there will be disguised, deceptive people, disguised people that will come and, and they will act as if they were friends. They will act as if they were going to support. And then, although they will have uh, some soothing words to say, and when you say those soothing words, don't believe them. Those are disguised and deceptive people, but all the same. Whatever they are bringing out of the bag, I'm going to protect you from them, delivering you from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom I now send thee. Number four, there will be defiled, defiling people. There will be people who are defiled already and their goal will be to defile the minister. Their goal will be to destroy the minister by defilement, by abomination, by evil things, by temptation. 
And through their body, that is their Satan infest, infested body, they'll try to defile the apostle or try to defile the prophet or the preacher or the pastor or the minister. But he says, no matter who they are, are they dangerous, I'll protect you. Are they difficult? I'll protect you. Are they disguised and deceptive? I'll protect you. Are they defiled and defiling? I'll protect you. Number five, there'll be dreadful people, dreadful people, just to see them, just to look at them and see the fire of hell coming out of their eyes and to see the anger and the hatred. And for them in their hundreds and thousands shouting, Diana is the God of the Ephesians for two hours without stopping and then throwing up doors dreadful people that if you didn't know that God sent you and he gave you the promise delivering you from all the people and all the Gentiles unto whom I now send you that alone their dreadful look and appearance and posture and that's enough to send you back home number six there will be demonized people demonized people and they have the spirit of divination and although they cry and they say these are the men showing us the way of salvation they are possessed of demons of evil spirit and Paul the apostle had that discernment and he had that power and authority and cast out that spirit because he always remembered that no matter who they are that God has sent us to. He had promised already, I'll be delivering you every time, every day, in every place and with every people. I'll be delivering you from the people to whom I now send you and delivering you from the Gentiles. Number seven, there'll be deadly, deadly, devilish people. Just deadly. And the only thing, the only job is to kill a kind of in a squad that is a kind of composed or put together by the devil and they can shoot from a long distance and they hide everywhere and all they want to do and their job the assignment that the elders have given them is destroy that man but the lord was promising Paul the apostle, he said, I'm sending you, I'm sending you to, you know, different kinds of people, you are for their salvation, they don't know, and because the devil has blinded the minds of the people that believe not, this is what they will try to do, but don't ever look at them, don't ever think about them, and don't ever take your eyes away from Christ, away from God, who has called you and appointed you and made you to be a minister and a witness, and that he has made you a preacher, a teacher, an apostle, and you have to declare the whole council cell of God. It tells us in uh, Psalm 15. I'm looking at Psalm 15 and you'll see that the promise of the Lord at Psalm 50, Psalm 50. The promise of the Lord had been there all the time. It's there for you. It's there for me. I said it's there for you. It's there for me. It said in, the, in Psalm 50 verse 15, call upon me in the day of trouble and I will do what? I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me we're looking at job chapter 5 job chapter 5 and i read from verse 19 job chapter 5 verse 19 it shall deliver thee in six troubles yea in seven there shall no evil touch thee in famine it shall redeem thee from death and in war from the power of the sword and thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction you will not be afraid when it cometh look at verse 22 this is wonderful at destruction and famine thou shalt laugh at destruction and famine you will laugh why will you laugh because you know this may be for them this is not for you it will not touch you because of the promise that the Lord has given to the people that go to the people that I have sent them a destruction and famine thou shalt laugh neither shall thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth there are some beastly people brute beasts as Jude calls them and the Lord is saying you will not be afraid of those brute beasts beasts of the earth in isaiah chapter 46 isaiah chapter 46 i'm reading from verse 4 46 verse 4 and even to your old age 
I am he. And even to your own ears, I will carry you. I have made and I will bear. Even I will carry and I will deliver you. I thought you'll say amen. In Jeremiah chapter 39. Jeremiah chapter 39. The Lord is with you already. I said the Lord is with you already. Jeremiah chapter 39. We're looking at it in verse 17. Jeremiah 39 verse 17. But I will deliver thee in that day, says the Lord. And thou shalt not be given into the hand of the men of whom thou art afraid. You will not be given into their hand. Their power will not have any authority over you. They may be thirsty of doing evil, but that evil will never touch you. And you will, you will laugh, you will rejoice, because you know that the Almighty God is on your side. And because he is on your side, no evil will come your way in Jesus' name. Because deliverance has been promised to the messengers of the gospel, to the ministers of the Lord. Ezekiel chapter 13 verse 23. Ezekiel chapter 13 verse 23. Therefore, ye shall see no more vanity, nor divine divinations, for I will deliver my people out of your hand. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Deliverance is promised everywhere to the people of God, to the ministers of God, and to those who are walking in obedience to the will, to the word of God. Second Corinthians chapter 1 verse 10. Second Corinthians chapter 1 verse 10. Who delivered us from so great a death. He delivered us in the past. And you know what David said? What gave David confidence for the present time is what the Lord had done in the past. He said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the bear, he did that in the past. That gives me confidence, trust, and assurance, and the faith that he'll deliver me from this Goliath. The activity or the action of God in the past is what gives us assurance and faith and confidence for the present day. For what he had done before, he will do it again today. That's why you find in this verse, the three uh, parts, uh, the, uh, the three uh, parts of te tenses, that it says, he delivered us, that's the past, from so great a death. And now he does deliver, and does deliver in the present tense. Why will he not? When he still has the work for us to do, and when he still has the commission for us to carry out, and when we still have that heart and that thing within us that is working and running and laboring in obedience to the commission that he has placed on us, he does deliver, and then in the future now, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us in the past he delivered, in the present he's still delivering, and in future he will keep on delivering you. In Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 18, Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 18, I could uh, God forget uh, all these many places where it reserved for us that word deliver or that word of deliverance. How could he forget if he has made the promise over and over and over and he gave it to the old covenant people and he's giving it to the new covenant people and he's brought it to you and to me today in so many places reminding us, assuring us, giving us hope and confidence and trust that he will deliver, he must deliver, he will deliver you. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 18 And the Lord shall deliver me from some of the evil works From a lot of the evil works Maybe there are some of those evil works God has just said No, I will not take that away That will test you and that will show me this or that Anything like that 
Maybe as some people say when there is evil confronting them, when the powers of darkness and those dangerous people, difficult people, disguised people, demonized people, deadly people, devilish people, and those defiled, defiling people, when it come at them, some of them, some of us will just give up and will resign. We'll say, maybe this is the will of God. Maybe I have to bear this cross. Maybe I have to carry this load. Maybe this is something I have to carry together with my with my assignment the assignment is heavy now and the goal and the thing god has got to give it to us to do is heavy enough we don't need the addition of all those people and therefore the lord said he will deliver from every evil word he'll deliver us in jesus name it's not the cross of Christ and another thing. The cross and sickness, the cross and attack, the cross and affliction, the cross and scarcity, the cross, the cross and fam the cross is heavy now. And what he has given us, the responsibility he has given us to carry and the gospel he has given us to preach, it takes the whole time that God will not allow any other thing. And he says, that's enough. That's why Jesus Christ said for you in Tatira, I will lay no other burden upon you than this one necessary thing. The commission he had given us, the work he had given us, the assignment and the duty he had given us, the preaching of the gospel. And that heavy responsibility of taking this whole gospel to the whole world is enough. And therefore he says it's not going to add any other sin. You know there are people that they will say maybe I'm carrying this, I'm carrying this. You've not even carried the whole gospel. And until you carry the whole gospel you have no right picking up any other sin. That's not coming from the Lord. Everything that comes from the devil you drop it here this morning. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. And will preserve me. Will he preserve you? Yes, he will. If God is still in heaven, he will. If the promises of God are yes and amen, he will. And if all the earth and all of hell, the sea, the ocean, anything you can see and the things you cannot see, if they are not as powerful as the almighty God, according to the word of the Lord, which changes not, he shall preserve you. He'll preserve you in Jesus' name unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever and everybody said amen, amen. god's unchanging promise of deliverance i divide the message to three parts number one special promises for commissioned ministers special promises to commission for commissioned ministers number two several people confronted with Christ's message. Several people, several people, different kinds of people confronted with Christ's message. Number three, supernatural protection for consecrated messengers. Supernatural protection for consecrated messengers. Number one, what's number one on your notes? Special promises for commissioned ministers. Let's come back to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26. Acts chapter 26 and we're looking at verse 17 delivering thee here yeah, the promise of god came to paul the apostle as the lord was giving him the commission and showing him the heavenly vision and the thing that was to occupy the rest of his life then the lord said i'll be delivering you from the people and from the gentiles unto whom i now send you jeremiah chapter one anytime god calls any servant any preacher any minister any apostle any pastor anyone to take the gospel to another person and he gives you an assignment and he says drop your life's ambition and take just this and go and give the gospel of their salvation unto the people of the world in which he live anytime he gives such a commission such an assignment he also gives a special promise to back each up jeremiah chapter 1 verse 7 jeremiah chapter 7 chapter 1 verse 7 but the lord said unto me 
Say not, I am a child. Say not, I am inexperienced. Say not, I am untaught. Say not, I am unqualified. Say not, I am not able to meet the people. Say not, I am weak. Say not, I cannot do what you have called me to do. Say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go, thou shalt go. I said thou shalt go. For thou shalt go to all that I send thee, and to all, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of what? Of their faces. Do, do not be afraid of their faces. And you know, sometimes uh, we need to understand that the face is not always reflecting what the heart is. And you'll find some people that they pose as if they're very much knowledgeable. And when you look at their posture and you look at their appearance and you look at their faces, it will look that they're very knowledgeable. But when you begin to question them, you see that they're empty, that they know nothing, next to nothing. There are some people that also look very bold. They've worked on the outward exterior thing so much that it appears they're very bold on their faces. But when you dig in and then you try to do some other things to see that they're as weak as other men. There are some people that look terrifying and terrible in their appearance. Maybe because they didn't have chance to dress their hair or to be able to, you know, think uh, how they appear in public. And they look terrifying and terrible. But when you look at their hearts, you know, at their real spirit, they're not as dreadful as you think they are. Therefore, don't even look at those faces. Look beyond their faces and look at their fears and look at the thing that is motivating them actually some people that even commit crime the reason they do that is not because they're too bold it's because they feel insecure and they feel fearful and they feel terrified and as a result of just trying to live and trying to survive then they go into crime not because they are that bold and some of them and therefore don't even look at their faces the lord said because if you look at their faces you're going to get a wrong impression and it reminds you of uh, Moses when he came before Pharaoh. He didn't see Pharaoh. In Hebrews chapter 11 verse 27 said he was like he was seeing the invisible. He only saw the almighty God. He didn't see Pharaoh. Don't look at Pharaoh's face. Look at the face of the Lord Jesus Christ. The face of the one who had sent you. And look at the power of the one who has commissioned you. That's what you look at. And it says to Jeremiah, be not afraid of their faces. For I am with thee to deliver thee. He will deliver you. Says the Lord. Says the Lord. Verse 17. There, thou therefore get up thy loins. And arise. And speak unto them all that I command thee. Be not dismayed at their faces. Lest I confound thee before them. For behold I have made thee this day a defense city. And an iron pillar. And brazen walls against the whole land and against the kings of Judah and against the princes thereof, against the priests thereof, and against the land, the people of the land. And they shall fight against thee. But, tell me out loud. And you know, if you are going to contend honestly for the faith, once delivered unto the saints, you must not be afraid of a fight. Jesus fought. The enemy, the devil. And the apostles fought. They fought not just for their lives. They fought for the gospel. And for the preservation of the gospel. And Paul, the apostle said, I fought those beasts in Ephesus. And Polyca fought the people that wanted to destroy the gospel. And his confidence in the Lord, Ignatius. And many other people, the church fathers, they fought. And here it is your turn to honestly contend for the faith once delivered unto the saints. As for a fight, if you didn't want to fight, the devil will bring up a fight. The Philistines will bring up a fight. The Amalekites will bring up a fight. But we have won the battle and the war. 
they shall fight against thee but they shall not prevail against thee for i am with thee says the lord to deliver thee a special promise to the one commissioned by the lord in jeremiah chapter 15 jeremiah chapter 15 i'm reading from verse 16 jeremiah 15 verse 16 the words thy words were found and i did eat them you will eat the word of the lord what makes us strong is the word what gives us boldness in place of weakness and timidity and fear it's the word what gives us vision and maintains the vision in spite of all odds is the word what makes us to be able to face danger and plunge ourselves into the sea of humanity, the sea that is roaring and boiling, is the word. When you have the word in you and then the strength of the Lord and the power of the Lord comes in you, then you'll be able to go and do what the Lord has called you to do. Thy words were found. And I did each them. And I was, I what was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of mine heart, for I am called by thy name. Are you called by that name? O Lord God of hosts. In verse 20. And I will make thee unto this people, what? A first prison wall. And they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. You know, when you feel afraid, why do we feel afraid? When there's opposition, when there's persecution, when there's a fight coming from the opposite camp. You know what makes us afraid is not the fight really. What makes us afraid is the thought that we're going to be defeated. That's what makes you afraid. It's the thought they're going to kind of push you down and walk over you. What makes us afraid is the fear of rejection. That I am going to be made a fool, a worthless person, a weak person in the presence of my children, in the presence of my local church. And this problem is going to swallow me up and everybody is going to see that I'm a weak person. It's not the problem that makes you afraid. It's what you think will be the outcome of the problem that makes you afraid, the fear of failure. And the fear of rejection and the fear of defeat but when you know that in this fight before the fight begins you have won the victory already when you know you have won the victory and there is nothing that should be rejected for and there is nothing you can be defeated for then you know there is nothing to fear because the outcome of the battle is decided before the battle begins that's why the Lord said, I will make thee unto these people a fence, brazen wall, and they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee to save thee and to deliver thee, says the Lord. Verse 20 is so beautiful. I want you to read aloud. I want to hear it myself. Won't you go? Do you believe that will happen to me? Yes. Can I read it to you now? Yes. This is yours. Yes. I said this is yours. Yes. Anywhere you go and everywhere you go, the protection of the Lord will be with you in Jesus' name. Yes. What have you got to fear? I had somebody talking to another person. They said, I am here now. But you know, but you know, there's so much trouble at home. There's so much difficulty at home. And there's so much problem at home. In fact, what I'm facing, I cannot tell. But I don't know whether this is my last Congress. If Jesus tarries, this is not my last Congress. I said, this is not my last Congress. You will see me again. I said, you will see me again. And I will see you again in Jesus' name. The water in that stage will not swallow you up in Jesus' name. 
When you are passing through the water, it will be with you. When you are passing through the fire, it will be with you. You will not be burnt in Jesus' name. All those people, whatever their power and whatever their plan and whatever their purpose, they will not overcome you. Because the Lord has given us the assurance that he will protect us. In verse 21, I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked. And I will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible. You know, some people, they are so bold and they publicize who they are. And then they will write a placard. And then sometimes in some of the states, they'll wear red. And then put Mr. Terrible, Mr. Danger. And while they are coming like this, it's like they're all in a concert together, in a gang together. And they'll be chanting what they want to chant. And they say, terrible, terrible, terrible. And while they're coming, everybody will be dodging. And they'll be hiding. But you stand there like the rock of Gibraltar while they come in and you will overcome in Jesus name no matter their name no matter their title no matter their terror you will overcome the Lord has sent us to villages we're going there the Lord has sent us to cities we're going there the Lord has sent us to demonized places where people feel you cannot plant a church here you cannot preach the gospel there deeper life will be everywhere where all the people are running away and they say we cannot we cannot we cannot that's where we're going and the Lord will go with you because the promise, special promise of the Lord belongs to you. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and I will redeem you out of the hand of the terrible. It will do it in Jesus' name. Point number two, special, uh, several people confronted with the with Christ's message. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26, Acts Chapter 26, I'm reading from verse 17. Verse 17, delivering thee from the people. Delivering thee from the people. Let's look at the several people that Paul the Apostle preached the gospel to. And he confronted them with the gospel. Acts chapter 13. Let's see some of these people. Acts chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 6. And when they had gone through the isle unto Paphos. They found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was by Jesus. Do you see this? That the Lord had told Paul already, you'll meet different kinds of people. And he'll have a lot of tricks and a lot of talisman and a lot of whatever it is they want to bring out. And they'll want to do their magical thing to hinder you and to stop your way. The Lord already told them ahead of time. And now here we learn that this sorcerer, a false prophet, whose name was by Jesus, which was what the deputy of the country, suggests Paulus, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and delivered and desired to hear the word of God, but Elimas the sorcerer. For so is his name by interpretation which stood them. That's, that's one of the situations, one of the people who stood them. And then we're told, seeking to turn the deputy away from the faith. Then Saul, whose name was also called Paul, filled with what? You know, when you confront all these difficulties and all these difficult, dangerous, demonized people, you must remember the promise that the Lord had given you already. And because he remembered the promise and then he was filled with the Holy Ghost, he set his eyes on him something you don't want to do is to look down as if you're afraid of this man the sorcerer something you don't want to do is that you want to look away when you know that he is there's something you don't want to do is to become so cheap and so timid and so fearful that you're looking at the ground every time when you look out that fire of the holy ghost will pass from your eyes to theirs and they will know this is a different man you'll be a different man you'll be a different woman you'll not be looking away from the enemy you'll be looking at them and you will overcome in jesus name he set his eyes on him 
And then he said, O oh, fool of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, will thou not cease to pervert the righteous ways of the Lord? And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind. Can I tell you something? The people of God, the servants of God, they have the final word. The sorcerers don't have the final word. The demonized people don't have the final word. And the dangerous people don't have the final word. And the people that are opposing the gospel don't have the final word. We have the final word. And what we say in the name of the Lord by the Spirit of God is final. This man thought he had some power, he had some understanding, he had some tricks he could play so that he will turn away the deputy from the faith. But the Lord said, I'm sending you to all these people and your word I will confirm. And here it says in that verse 10, it says, Thou enemy of all righteousness, will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord and now behold the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And uh, what's the next word? There's no waste of time. Immediately, immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed. Being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. I'm looking at chapter 14 verse 1. And it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews. And so speak that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also the Greeks, believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles. There are people that will stir up the mob. And those were the people that God was telling Paul about. And he said, I'm sending you to them. That there's a mob, there's danger, there's difficulty, and there's commotion. Doesn't mean that you are not to pray to them, you are to go to them. And then it says over here, and made their minds evil affected against the brethren. And even though they were evil affected against them, did they run away? They say, okay, this is a difficult place and this is a dangerous place. Or how, why, did I, why did I not find out about the actions of the people and the plans of the people and the projects of the people and the fact that these people don't love the gospel? Why did I come here to do anything at all? I want you to look at verse 3 and I want you to look at the word therefore because it's a difficult place. Because it's a dangerous place. And because it's a place they were trying to resist the preaching of the gospel. Even because of that long time, therefore, Paul the apostle said, here we are to preach the gospel. And some people are responding already. And these other people have come wanting to oppose all right. Paul said, because of that opposition, because of that difficulty, therefore, long time, they are both speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. You will do the same thing. Acts of the Apostles chapter 16, the people, the several people that the Lord sent Paul the Apostle to. But he gave him the assurance and the confidence, I'll protect you, I'll deliver you, I'll preserve you until my everlasting kingdom. We're looking at Acts chapter 16, verse 16. And it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought our masters much gain by so saying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These are the disguised, demonized people, deceptive people, as if they are supporters, but they are opposers. 
having the spirit of divination and yet saying these men are the servants of the of the most high god which show unto us the way of salvation and they she did many days but paul being grieved turned and said to the spirit i command thee in the name of jesus christ to come out of her what happened and it came out the same hour once again can i remind you you have the last word i said you have the last word those demonized people don't have the last word and those sorcerers don't have the last word and those dangerous people don't have the last word and those opposers and gainsayers don't have the last word we have the last word the lord has sent us out with anointing and unction with power with authority and when we speak immediately it will happen in jesus name acts chapter 18 acts chapter 18 i'm reading from verse 6 and when they opposed themselves and blasphemed those are the people that the lord sent paul the apostle to the opposed the blasphemed he shook his raiment and said unto them your blood be upon your own heads i am clean from henceforth i go unto the gentiles verse 9 then speak the lord to paul in the night by a vision be not afraid and the lord is telling us telling you the same thing be not afraid are you afraid is your god able to protect you able to deliver you able to preserve your life then be not afraid but speak hold not thy peace for i am with thee and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee give me a good amen, amen. and you know you know why we're afraid sometimes we think that what they're doing will hurt us it will injure us it will take something away from us it will cause us pain and we're so much afraid of pain and we say because they will do this i better not confront them with the gospel it's the hurt that makes you afraid it's not really the people if you didn't know if you didn't feel they could hurt you you'll not be afraid of them but nobody can hurt you because around you have the wall of fire and that wall of fire protects and preserves you and nothing will be able to hurt you in jesus name be not afraid therefore i am with thee and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee for i have what much people in this city in a place where you come from god has a lot of people there that will be converted and they will be converted in jesus name Point number three, supernatural protection for consecrated messengers. Supernatural protection for consecrated messengers. Acts chapter 26, I'm reading from verse 17. Supernatural protection. Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee. That's the protection the Lord has promised. That protection is for you psalm 105 verse 13 all through to verse 15 psalm 105 verse 13 when they went from one nation to another and from one kingdom to another people he suffered he permitted he allowed no man to do them wrong nobody will do you wrong yeah he reproved kings for their sakes he reproved even kings for their sakes, saying, Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets what? No harm. That protection is around you. In Zechariah, Zechariah, I'm reading from chapter 2 and verse 5. For I, says the Lord, will be unto her will be unto you a wall of fire round about and will be the glory in the midst of her in verse 8 for thus is the lord of hosts after the glory as he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you 
For he that touches you touches the apple of his eye. Instead of you, can you put me there? For he that touches me touches the apple of his eye. Now, you say, but that's Old Testament. Uh-huh, Old Testament. Don't you remember that when Jesus Christ confronted Saul, he said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? He was persecuting them, and they were the apple of his eye. That's why this promise is for you and is for me. And no evil will touch you in Jesus' name. While you are going on the path of duty, in the way of service, and you are doing what the Lord has called you to do, no evil shall befall you in Jesus' name. While you are sleeping, heaven will be protecting you. Look at Acts chapter 12. Acts chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 5. But Peter therefore was kept in prison. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. That's why I should be praying for your state overseer, for your region overseer, for your national overseer. And with your prayer... Whatever they are going through, God will protect our leaders for us in Jesus' name. And then for our group coordinators and coordinators, and uh, for all our women leaders, we need everyone. And our prayers will sustain them in Jesus' name. While Peter was in the prison, in prison because of the preaching of the gospel, the people of God, they were praying for him. And then it says, when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, when Herod would have brought him forth, he wanted to give uh, Peter that stroke of death. But Peter did not die, Peter had life. And the death that Herod wanted to give unto Peter at the end of the chapter, the death he wanted to give unto Peter, who got it? I said, who got it? You know, it boomeranged on him. What he wanted to give to the man of God came back and got him. And he died at the end of that chapter. You know, what we have is life and life in abundance. What we have is preservation and protection. What we have is the promise of God And what we have is the fulfillment of everything God has promised us And we're going to have them in Jesus' name You know, I don't want to pray for the heralds and the people But, you know, I'm praying for them That God will turn them and change their lives and change their hearts But if they do not change Let me leave the rest for the last part of the chapter Acts chapter 12, I'm reading from verse 6. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night, Peter was anxious. And Peter was worried. And Peter was writing petition. You know, these people of God, they teach us a lot of lessons. Rest and be at peace. Don't be worried. Don't be anxious. When the Lord is on your side, what are you worried about? There is nothing to worry about. And then you go to sleep. Anywhere with Jesus, I can go to sleep. Anywhere he sends you. Anywhere you are. And whatever Herod is planning and whatever effort he's making to get rid of you by the morning, by the morning you'll still be alive. And Peter knew that. Peter knew that. He knew that it wasn't time yet. When it was time, he knew. He knew. He knew when it was time. If you read Second Peter, it said, As the Lord assured me, I will soon put up this tabernacle. And the Lord had not told him yet. And because the Lord had not told him yet, I'll put up this tabernacle. He said, there's nothing to worry about. I know what Herod is dreaming and planning and designing. And what he's trying to plot. What he's trying to do. But there's no time yet. When it's time, the Lord will tell me. And because he has not told me, I will go to sleep. You can go to sleep. And the Lord will protect you in Jesus' name. He was sleeping between two soldiers and bound with two chains on the keepers before the door. Kept the prison. 
And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side, and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. Those chains are broken. And the angel said unto him, Guard thyself, and bind on thy sandals. And he did it, so he did it. And then we were told, And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. And he put those soldiers by him to a deep perpetual sleep. Those soldiers, they were all asleep. And all those warders, they were all asleep. Until you go through, they will all be asleep. They will forget their duty. They will forget their plan. They'll forget everything, every training they have got. To be able to destroy you at that time when you are passing through, it will go off their mind in Jesus' name. And then it says, we're told in verse 9, And he went out and followed him, and wished not, and knew not that it was true which was done by the angel. But he thought, he saw a vision. You will see more than a vision. And when they passed, when they were past the first and the second watch, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord automatic deliverance and they went out and passed through one street and forthwith the angel departed from him and when peter was come to himself he said now i know now i know that time will come as you go back home something will happen you will say now i know the fulfillment of that thing i heard on the last day 31st of december in the faith clean that the protection the preservation was for me deliverance was for me dominion was mine now i know now i know will you know yes. why are you sitting down there will you know yes. now i know every day in the new year now i know i said now i know now i know now i know of a truth now i know that the lord has sent a angel and he has delivered you i said he has delivered you out of the hand of herod and from all the expectation of the people of the jews i'm telling you nobody can stop your way and nobody can destroy you every day of your life the fulfillment of the promise of god will be real yes and amen in your life and then you'll be able to say every time everywhere now i know open your mouth to the lord and thank the lord and say now i know now i know now i know the lord has delivered me from the hand of Herod. The Lord has broken the yoke. The Lord has destroyed. All the powers of darkness. Now I know. Deliverance is mine. Dominion is mine. Protection, preservation is mine. Now I know. God's miracle hand will so touch you. Will so preserve you. Will so do a great thing in you that you'll be able to testify and you'll be able to say, Now I know. The reality of the fulfillment of the promise of God, of the healing power, of the deliverance, of the breaking of the yoke, of the destruction of all the works of the devil will be so real, mighty, and powerful in your life. It will first of all look like this is too good to be true. It's like a dream, like a vision. But then you'll be able to say, Now I know. While you're on the path of duty, while you're on your way, doing what the Lord has appointed you to do, nothing can stop your way, nothing can hinder you. Nothing can cut short your life. And nothing can stop your ministry. And the Lord will so work in a dynamic way, in a wonderful way. 
in a very clear, visible, demonstrable way that you'll be able to say, Now I know. Anywhere, anywhere, fear you cannot know. Anywhere with Jesus, you can safely, confidently, boldly, faithfully go. Anywhere, anywhere, anywhere. Fear you cannot know. Anywhere with Jesus, you can safely go, faithfully go, boldly go, courageously go. He has called you. He has sent you. He has commissioned you. And although you are going to confront different kinds of people, while you are faithfully confronting them, faithfully preaching the gospel to them, faithfully proclaiming, faithfully preaching, Faithfully pronouncing the word of the salvation of the lot of sinners. While you are faithfully evangelizing. Then you know that his promise of protection, of preservation, of deliverance, of dominion. You know that promise is for you. Be faithful. Be courageous. Be bold. We know the outcome of the fight already. We know the outcome. Of the battle already that the Lord said he will protect will protect his own he'll protect you he'll be with you be faithful don't be afraid anywhere with Jesus I can simply go anywhere he leads me in this world below Anywhere without him, there is joy's word fade. Anywhere, anywhere, anywhere. Oh, Jesus, I am not afraid. He has sent you. Therefore, he has sent, Lord, I'm ready to go. Ready to go. Ready to preach. Ready to evangelize. Anywhere, everywhere, I am not afraid. Anywhere with Jesus, you're not alone. Other fairies may fail you. He is still your very own. Though his sand may lead over the dreariest, dreariest of ways. Anywhere with Jesus will be a house of praise, a house of prayer, a house of preaching, a house of power. Anywhere, anywhere with Jesus over land and sea. Telling souls in darkness of salvation free ready as he summons you to go and preach anywhere with jesus as he points the way anywhere with jesus no worry no anxiety no panic no fear you can go to sleep you can rest when the darkness shadows around you creep, knowing you will waken never more to roam. Anywhere with Jesus will be home, sweet home. Anywhere, anywhere. Anywhere, 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 anywhere. Fear, I cannot know. Anywhere with Jesus. I can safely go. In Jesus' name we pray. I said in Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for the great commission. We thank you for the great command. We thank you for the great call you have given our lives. Lord, we come to you and we pledge and promise and consecrate and surrender our lives once again. And we say, by your grace, in your strength, in your power, under the umbrella of your protection, we will do what you have called us to do in Jesus' name. 
you have sent us to different kinds of people and whatever they are whatever they plan whoever they are we're going to faithfully declare the gospel truth in jesus name Amen. we love you we sign our lives to you we appreciate the sacrifice that you gave on the cross of calvary for us and for the salvation of the whole world and lord it's now the time for us to take the gospel torch and the gospel light and to take it to all the people and lord faithfully we're going to do it tirelessly we're going to do it courageously we're going to do it we're going to do it with conviction with zeal with earnestness with the fire of the holy ghost within us in jesus name and Lord, the fears of the past will drop them. The frightening the feeling of the past will drop everything. The timidity of the past will drop everything. Now like bold, courageous soldiers of the cross, we're marching on. And we're moving forward. And everywhere we go, we'll declare the salvation of the Lord in Jesus' name. We don't need to labor and fast and pray and command so much. Talking about deliverance. The deliverance is there already. The protection is there already. You have not forgotten the promise you have given us. And we know that we are in the path of duty. Nothing can hurt and nothing can harm our lives in Jesus' name. From today we drop all the fears of men. The fear of man brings a snare. By the fear of the Lord that prolongs life. Therefore, Lord, we drop all the fears we had in the past of any kind of people. And from today, we're going to courageously stand for what you've called us to stand for in Jesus' name. And we pray that your protection will be upon your people. The preservation will be for your people. The deliverance is given already. Ours will be the dominion in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that... As we go back home and as we experience the promise that you have given us, every day we'll be able to say, now we know. Now I know. Now I know. Make it real in the life of everyone. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Anywhere, anywhere, fear I can not know. Anywhere with Jesus I can safely live. Anywhere, anywhere, anywhere. Fear I cannot know anywhere. anywhere oh Jesus. Jesus Finally, courageously. Yeah. 